friend, welcome back to The Word with Wit. In today's video, I'm actually gonna be talking about something that we all go through, storms and difficult situations. Sometimes we can get so stressed and so worked out, so worried that we can lose focus on what's important. We can just wanna give up. We can end up in a state of depression, all the things. So in today's video, I just wanna share some ways to get your peace back. Jesus never promised us that we wouldn't face trials or we wouldn't have troubles in the world. He actually stated the opposite. However, he did leave us with a promise that we could have peace that surpasses all understanding. So I'm gonna share five strategies that will allow us to walk in the fullness of that peace. So our first strategy would be getting to know God. As we study his word and we walk with him, we begin to know him, we begin to trust him, we begin to see who he is. And that helps to calm our worries and our anxieties and depression, all the things. It helps us because we know his character and we know that he's not going to leave us, he's not going to, he's not going to forsake us. As we get to know him, we learn all of his different attributes. So we get to know him as healer, we get to know him as redeemer, as deliverer, as healer, as provider, all the things. We realize like he's with us. He wants what is good for us. And as we learn and realize how faithful and how good God is, we begin to trust in him. We begin to realize that whatever we're going through, he's going to work it for our good. So I do have some scripture to support this. You all have probably heard it, but just in case you haven't, or maybe you just need a reminder, Romans 8:28 tells us that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. So just remembering that helps us to know that even if we are going through a difficult situation, God is going to work it out in some way to bring good for us and good for the kingdom. Strategy number two would be staying focused on Jesus. So as you all know, I always like to talk about when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter asked to go out, he got out, he walked on water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. But when he began to look at the wind and the waves, he began to sink. And of course, when he called out, Jesus was faithful to pull him up out of the water and save him. So he didn't sink, he didn't drown. Well, he started sinking, but he didn't drown. And the same applies for us. If we take our eyes off of Jesus, it can distract us. It can make us lose focus on what's really important. We can start comparing ourselves to others and we can begin to worry, thinking it's going to fix anything and everything. However, worrying does not fix anything. It does not resolve anything. Yes, of course, we can go over solutions, possible solutions. That's not considered worrying, but sitting there trying to replay everything or think about the worst, all day and worrying yourself is only hurting you. It doesn't add a day or a moment or a minute or anything to your life. So don't focus on the problem, focus on Jesus. And doing so will help you to just stay in peace. Again, going back to Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. So if you're focusing on Jesus, you know he's gonna work it out. So another tidbit that goes along with that is just remove anything that distracts you. Remove anything that you notice triggers you to begin worrying or comparing or doubting or having fear. So for me personally, social media can cause me to compare myself or compare situations or even just to covet the things that other people have. You know, it can make me think I'm not in the place that I want to be at or it can make me just focus on the wrong things can distract me often. That is the biggest thing that it does for me. It distracts me. So I won't make a video or I won't be working in purpose or I won't be doing the things that I know God is putting on my heart to do. You know, as a mom, reading and studying with my children and teaching them about God or, you know, going to church, all the things, it'll make me stay up later at night scrolling and then in the morning I won't want to wake up and do what I need to do. So it's a distraction and it seems innocent. It seems harmless because you may not even be looking at anything that makes you compare or makes you worry or anything like that. It may just be an outlet for you, but it's keeping you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's keeping you from focusing on God. And whenever we lose sight of God, next thing you know, worry and anxiety and depression and all those things can creep in. 
And the last thing I want to hit on in this strategy is that we need to remember that everything that we go through is not always about us. Sometimes it's going to help us in our influence, in our position of influence. We may need to speak to people about what we're going through. We may, there may be a season where we're going to have to walk someone else through this. There are many people that are, that don't know God and they don't have access to God in the way that we do. But because we do have God, he comforts us and he can bring us through and we know that. And whenever we get through it, we can help the next person through it. So just staying focused on God and remembering that even though this season may be harder for you than normal, or it may be, it may seem impossible to get through, know that God is gonna get you through it. And when he does, use it to reach back and help the next person. Our purpose is bigger than us. So God doesn't just give us our gifts and our talents and our situations to bless us. He gives it to us so that we can help others, so that we can benefit the kingdom. And we do that by do that by sharing our testimony. So the scripture that I'm going to share for this one is 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. It says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us all in our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God." I know that is a lot and a little confusing you got to read it a couple of times because it's wordy but anyways pretty much we are able to comfort others the same way that god comforts us so we have to go through situations if i didn't have any experience in anything in life you wouldn't want to listen to anything i had to say because you would be like she doesn't know my situation she doesn't understand she never had to go through anything and you would be right so life is our teacher experience is our teacher and sometimes we have to go through things that aren't necessarily for us. We may not be able to understand why we're going through it. However, you know, God will use that situation to bless the next person, to help the next person get through it because we all need each other. The next one goes without saying, and these are not in any particular order because if it was, this would be one of the most important things that you could do to help you through any storm or situation. And that would be praying. So sometimes we neglect the most simple things because it seems like God know we already know God sees everything, he's with us, and we may forget to talk to him about the things that we are going through. However, it's very important that we don't neglect this step. Even if it seems like the prayers are not working, even if we're not getting the answers that we want, just talking to God allows us to process it and allows God to talk back and answer, answer our questions. So sometimes he may be trying to talk to us and tell us things and answer questions for us. But if we're not talking to him, if we're not open to, if we're not having that open line of communication, we're not even going to hear it because we have this worry, this stress, all these things going through our head. And we haven't even sit down to have a conversation with God to see what he may have to say about the situation or just to invite him in, just to be honest with him. God already knows how we feel. So trying to say a cute little God let your will be done prayer, which is great if you really mean it. That's not gonna be enough. If we really are going through something and we are not understanding and we are overwhelmed and stressed out, sometimes we just need to have an honest conversation with God and say, God, I don't know why I'm in this situation. I trust you, but I just feel overwhelmed. I don't know where you're working in this, but help me to see it. And just inviting him into the problem, just being honest with him. You can't hide how you feel. So if you're angry at God and you're sitting here trying to just say a little prayer just to get by, God's going to know you're not being genuine. Just be honest with him and invite him into that moment with you and just tell him about what's going on in your life. Yes, he may see it all, but he wants to, he wants to hear from you. He wants to talk to you about it. Prayer also allows us to remember to surrender the problem to God. So prayer is, we often say being at the feet of Jesus when we're talking about prayer. And whenever we go to Jesus and we're, we're laying our life down in front of him, we are surrendering that problem to him saying, I don't know how to figure this out. I don't know what to do about this situation. I am stressed out. I just want to experience your peace. I want to remember that you know, or you are working all things for my good. I want to remember that you will never leave or forsake me and that you are with me in this. And I just pray that you will just help me to get through this. And just laying our problems at his feet allows us to get back up and know 
God is with us. It reminds us who he is and that he's with us in the situation and we don't have to keep trying to figure it all out, that he will help us get through it. So the scripture I'm gonna read for this one is Matthew 6, 31 through 34. It says, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So we don't have to focus on everything. God knows what we need. We can pray, lay it down at his feet, and let it go. You know, prayer is talking to him about it and inviting him into the situation and leaving it there, not picking it back up and going back to worry after. God knows what we need and he's going to give us those things. But if we focus on him, he will automatically provide all of our needs. Everything will work itself out. Number four is going to be taking our thoughts captive. And I can't stress this one enough because I've used it in so many situations. And sometimes I forget, but God always brings me back to it. So take our thoughts captive. And it may sound complicated, but it's not. It's really simple, especially as you start studying your word and you start getting to know who God is. It's easy to recognize thoughts that aren't godly thoughts, that go against who he is. When we start thinking things like being afraid, oh, this isn't gonna work out, I'm gonna lose my job, just thinking the worst. God is not a God of fear and he doesn't want to scare us. Yes, we, are, we should be God-fearing, as in we should be respectful of him and respecting who he is and understanding his power and all of that. But he doesn't want us to be fearful in our everyday life, as in fearing the things of this world. He wants us to know that he's with us and that he's going to protect us and that he provides for us and he takes care of us and he loves us. So no matter what's going on or what looks crazy around us, he wants us to remember that he's with us. And to do that, you have to take your thoughts captive sometimes. Whenever a thought comes across your mind that doesn't line up with who God is, whenever you start saying in your head, I'm ugly, or I'm never going to make it out of this situation, or I'm so alone, remembering that God is with us, remembering that he provides for us, remembering that he loves us, remembering that he said that we are wonderfully made, that we're a masterpiece. Remembering those things, it allows us to correct those thoughts and remove the enemy from our mind, remove our distrustful self, our flesh, and actually get to the truth of things. It also allows us to recognize our triggers. So if you notice that you're around a certain person or you're looking at a certain thing or you're focused on a certain thing, every time these negative thoughts come around, it allows you to recognize that. Like every time I'm with this person, I start doubting God and I start wondering if he's going to actually take care of me or every time i talk about this i start getting fearful or i get i start to worry you have to recognize okay this is the trigger what can i do instead instead of talking about it with this person that makes me fearful and makes me worry i need to just pray and talk to god about it or i need to find someone who can offer me godly counsel and just changing those habits changing your thoughts and recognizing those negative thought patterns and those triggers will help set you free many times from many things. The next scripture is also gonna be in 2 Corinthians, um, it's chapter 10, verse five. It says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised up against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So again, make your thoughts obedient to Christ. If it doesn't line up with what he says, it's out of here. Get it out of your mind, focus on the word of God. Number five is extremely important also, and it's gonna be praise and worship. I know it sounds counterproductive that if you're going through a situation, you don't wanna praise God necessarily. You don't wanna thank him and you haven't been delivered from the situation. What are you even thanking him for? So thanking him in advance and praising and worshiping in advance before he delivers you through the situation allows you to put your trust back in God and shows God that no matter what is going on, no matter what my situation looks like, I still trust you, God. I'm still focusing on you. And it also reminds us who God is. I can't tell you how many times I have 
been stubborn and hard-hearted and not wanted to cut on worship music whenever I was going through a situation, but I just kept feeling it on my heart or one of my friends, you know, was like, have you praised? Have you, have you been praising God? Have you been saying thank you to God? Have you been worshiping him? Have you, you know, cut up, tried cutting on some worship music and set the tone in your home? Have you done these things? And I'm like, no. But anyways, I go ahead and do it because I've heard it enough times and I know in my heart that's what I need to do even though I'm not really in the mood. Cutting on that worship music and hearing those lyrics and just singing them, remembering who God is, it just helps you so much. You know, sometimes we can get in a funk and even though we may be studying our word, it's just not hitting, we're reading in our head, you know, we're not reading it out loud. So it's just not as powerful because our mind is just kind of turned off. It's kind of distracted. We're worried about everything else. So we're just kind of checking off a list. But whenever you're in worship and you're really like spending that time, I'm gonna tell you, you're probably gonna cry, especially if you're like me. And even if you're not, anybody can cry and just get to that place of humility and true surrender in a moment of pure worship where you're just spending time with God and you're just singing to him and you're giving him glory through your lips just professing his glory and his love and just reminding yourself, like I said, who he is, it helps us through so much and it allows us to experience that peace. Even though sometimes I won't tell you a lie here, sometimes it may just get me through the night and I may have to turn around in the morning and do the same thing because those thoughts come back in the morning or I try, I find myself worrying again because I talked to someone who was a worrier by nature and yeah, I have to get back into that space. I have to invite God's presence into my room or wherever I'm at, my car a lot of times, and just experience him and just have that refreshing of my spirit, that renewing. I'm gonna share Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 through 16, because I believe this will truly help you see what I'm saying here. It says that through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So there you have it. I mean, even in the scripture, it says it's a sacrifice of praise. Sometimes it's gonna be a sacrifice. You don't wanna give him that praise because you're in a situation and you don't see a way out, but just sacrificing that praise just reminds us who he is and and brings him into the situation and just reminds us that he's going to get us through it and that we have the faith that and we believe so i don't want to just say we have faith because sometimes we forget even what that means or we just let it slide on by we truly believe that he's going to bring it through so sacrificing that praise and saying god thank you in advance let god know that we believe it and let's ourself know that we know that he's gonna get us through it. All this may seem like a lot, but over time, these actions become healthy habits that we naturally gravitate to when things get difficult. Changing daily habits has the power to change our life. I pray this video has empowered you to overcome any storms that may try to overtake you. If this video has helped you, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share it with someone else you think it may help. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you and I will see you soon. Be blessed, friend.